June marks the 53rd anniversary of Pride Month. Here at the Chris David Show, we're celebrating by highlighting important figures in the LGBTQ plus community. The 1990 documentary, Paris is Burning, exposed the world to the Black queer subculture known as Ballroom. Though it premiered over 30 years ago, it still remains a cult classic and a very important part of the Black cultural experience. Freddie Pendavis of the legendary House of Pendavis was at the forefront of that experience and one of the stars of the popular documentary. Today, he's back on The Chris David Show to share with us even more on his life, as well as his thoughts about Google Arts and Culture's Ballroom and Focus project. Let's give a warm Chris David Show welcome to our friend, Mr. Freddie Pendavis. Welcome back, Freddie. Hi, Chris, how are you? I'm good. It's good, good to be Freddie. back. Good. How are you, Freddie? How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Good. I mean, good. if now, you complain- it gets worse. <laughs> That's the truth. It's, it, it, there's no need in doing it. I mean, it's pointless. Yeah. It's pointless. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you this, though. Everyone left so many lovely comments about you from our last show. Oh, like, really? Most of, them, most of them were women, and they were asking about your skincare routine. And I told you before, you need to drop that routine. I told you. But, um, <laughs> and, and Freddie is 56, everyone. This is, this is what 56 looks like, OK? Thank you. And, and just like I said, when Joanna Briley was on, Joanna's 55, both of you look like summer camp counselors. <laughs> Thank okay? you so much. You, look, you do. You, both you. of you do. And, and I guess that means I look like a little fetus. But anyway, um, <laughs> but when you, when you love what you do and you work through your shit, you age well. You Thank have you. to work through your shit. Thank you. Yes. No one else's yeah. responsibility to work through your shit for you. That's the truth. You know what so I'm saying? very honest. Yes. So let's get right to it. We're mm-hmm. in Pride Month. And this year marks the 53rd annual Pride Month. Now, a few videos ago, I broke down the significance of Pride for Black queer people. And if you all haven't seen that, go check it out. But Freddie, I want you to tell us why Pride is so important to you and for us. Because we came from a time in which we had to struggle and I mean really struggle in the sense um, being beat up for just existing. And I'm going to tell you a little, a little, well, it's a little story, a little anecdote about that. There was once this, at the time it was called the drag queen, but now it's called the trans, trans woman who was going by this, um, construction site. I think I told you this before. And this couple of guys used to give her a hard time, but then this one specific guy always made it hard for her. She said, don't make me put down my womanhood, and pick up my man. He said, yeah, do that, do that, do that. It was a hot day in July in New York City. And you know it gets hot in New York City in July. She said, okay. She took off her shoes after a long, hard night of work. And she said, let's box. She beat that man within three inches of his life. He quit his job and he was so embarrassed. And she just walked by that same spot every day. And they knew, leave her alone. It went from being a her, being a him, her, to being a full her, respect what she is because she will whip your ass. That's where we came from, having to deal with that, having to be arrested because we didn't choose to go with the societal norms and being able to be free to express ourselves and to you know, embrace not just ourselves, but other people. And that was it. So that's the reason why Pride Month is important to me. 
It's not about the celebrations. It's not about the parties and everything else. The parties are okay, big whoop. I mean it, really. You know, um, what is it? The circuit parties. Let me take this off. Really? 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 No, I'm not feeling it. So, <laughs> that's it. And let's put it like this. I've been to a circuit party. I've been to one. And I was like, can I get a V8? I was bored out of my damn ass. I was bored out of my ass. So, <laughs> Brian, it's important. Now, Freddie, personally, I love when you share Kim's stories. Now, Kim Pendavis, everyone, was also featured in Paris is Burning Embers. That was Freddie's best friend. Like, I mean, you two were like brothers. Um, yeah. Give us a Kim story, Freddie. I, I, I just enjoy these so much. Give us a Kim story. Mm. Kim used to tell me a lot of great, great um, things when I went to bed. When I went to bed, he used to tell me all of the fierce, fierce, fierce gossip that would happen, you know, that I wasn't around. One day he told me about the story. There was a time in which somebody broke the window, the Macy's 34th Street window, right? Look at your reaction. Anyway, they broke the window. They was robbing Macy's. They, 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 they took, they, they did this thing, right? They was getting ready to get out of the window. The whole thing, the cops were coming, right? One person jumped up in the window and posed like she was a mannequin, right? And the whole thing, the cops went by her two, three times, except this one short, fat, black woman who couldn't take it couldn't deal with the reality that she was so beautiful, so gorgeous. She looked like a mannequin in the window. And she said, bitch, if you don't get the fuck up out of this window, I know Macy's never had a black mannequin in the window. I will shoot you and lose my job. I don't give a fuck. You better get up out of this window by the time I count to three. She pulled out her gun and pulled it on. And I'm going to say the person's name. Moldavia. She got out the window and all the cops, all the white, black, everybody looked and was like, oh shit. If that's dude, that dude is gorgeous. Hello. <sighs> so there, there goes another one. That was what Kim, Kim told me that story. But, um, that goes to the, what is it? Uh, the same song that, uh, what's it, Brooke and Carmen were singing on the beach when they, um, in Paris is Burning. I am what I am. I'm my own special creation. And that's mm -hmm. how special each creation was. Each creation is, I should have to say. You know? Freddie, you have to give us another Kim at bedtime story. <laughs> I love that one, by the way. I, I and you told me that one before um, about Maldives. Yeah, I did. Yes, yeah, yes. I, did. I did. You got to give me another mm -hmm. one, though. I, I, okay. I, like I told you, I love these Kim stories. Oh, how about? But though, did I tell you the one where um, I told you the one about the the trans woman who got um, who slapped people while she was in a club and stuff like that, and then no. you know she went missing, and after she went missing. You know, her drug dealer boyfriend didn't know where she was and he got taken out by the cops and, you know, and he they asked him to identify the body in which he couldn't identify the body because it was all cut up. And they, then the person said, I hope she rests in pieces. <laughs> you know, I swear, did the, the people from back you then, or Did you catch it? Did, I, the sense of humor, like, I mean, I just imagine when I hear things like that, I just imagine what great TV shows and movies and books and film and just everything we would have had had those people had access to writing rooms. I know. Let's put it like this. 
those are uh, among the stories that I've written and comprised together to um to try to produce something for us about us, you know. But um, I'm still in the process of working on it, so I can't give away but so much. Have you ever done the Pride Parade? Because parades in me in the village just don't get along. Like, I went to the Halloween parade one year. I'll tell you that story. There was this girl out there. She had a baby stroller. She's, like, out there, you know, amongst thousands of people, and she's out there with a baby. And I'm like, girl, did you take a wrong turn or something? Like, <laughs> why are you out here with a one-year-old? Like, what? You needed to leave the kid at home. You mm -hmm. need to leave the kid at home. I don't know really, what her story part, was. Each, each of the parades in New York, especially because they used to be down in the village, they were parties. They weren't really just parades. They were parades and parties. And they were huge parties. So, I mean, I know if your kid was maybe eight, 10 years old, you could bring them. But other than that, that was it. Because you didn't watch them alone. Right. It was like around, you brought fit around 10, 20 friends, and all y'all watching. So that was it. But a one-year-old, you kind of leave with your mom. You in the stroller. Else and that's it I don't know stroller. what her issue was, Freddie. Like, I don't know. And then she was like, I remember, because, like, I cut. I was trying to avoid the parade, okay? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to watch from the stands. But I ended up in the crowd of people, because you know how the village is. One wrong turn, and you're on some street that you don't want to be on. And that's what right. happened. And she's <laughs> out there with this, this baby in, in the stroller. And then, like, everybody is pushing past her. And then she turns and she looks at me like, oh my God, watch my, and I'm like, five people just damn near ran you over. Don't look at me. Like, this is your fault. And that's the whole thing. Okay, I have to say, I have actually, when I was working at William F. Ryan Community Health Center, I had worked the Pride Parade and uh, what other parade we did? Well, we did the Pride Parade. Um, you know, as the HFV and also the um the major, what was it? Some other parade in the summer. Um, it was a very long, long, long. Did I say long yet? Um, day, <clears throat> night, everything else. So um, I I worked I worked one parade. I went to three just as a bystander and you know the three out the three four five i went to as a bystander with fun because you know i could go i could walk around i could do what i want and everything else they were nice the celebration of you know for which you know um we happened to enjoy was worth it so parades are interesting but it depends on how you take it and you have to take it as an adult i mean uh, uh, yeah an adult teenager to a full adult because you can't go out there with anybody under 10 you can't do that no 10 years old and up yeah, with maybe five or six friends, yes. Other than that, you know, you're going alone or you're going with your friends and that's it. But what you described was is completely out of my the realm of my possibility. I hear the prides in other cities, though, are really nice mm -hmm. now. That's no diss to New York City, the greatest city in the world. But have of you course. been to any of the other prides in other cities? Actually, no. No, I... I I, I kind of, at this point, um, I distance myself from pride in general because I've been there, I've done that, I've fought the good fight, I'm old. Okay. I don't old. know about old, I don't know about that. <laughs> and, but, you know. But I, I understand. Like, I'm old <laughs> yeah, in the sense I, of it's I've done old everything too. I had to do. Right. You know, I'm I'm just pretty much over it. 
Yeah. I will go. If I go, I'll go because a friend wants to to meet up there. We'll meet. We'll talk. Mm-hmm. We'll laugh. And then... Whatever. Yeah. I, I, no, I get it. I totally get it. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, the Black Pride Fest, like the one in Philly and the one mm-hmm. in D.C., those are popular. And I can't remember... I don't think New York has ever had. A no, black no, no. I don't pride. think so. If anything, that that may be interesting for me to go to. Mm-hmm. So I'll have to look forward to that. Yeah. Now that I'm, I in, think Phillies was in Maryland. April. Yeah, Phillies was in April, and DC's was over uh, Memorial Day uh, weekend. That's oh, okay. when DC was. I mean, in New York, Pride, it, Pride, Pride is black. I mean, it got started by you know us by black people. So I mean, you know. Um, but yeah, I don't know of any, I can't think of any black pride for New York. And I mean, if there are promoters out here, you know, watching and listening, I mean, they, that may be something for you. That to, would be, that'd be something very interesting. Yes. Yeah. When, before you say anything, uh-huh. I have to make this comment yes. to you because I know this is a part of something that Pendavises do. And if Avis was around, she'd be very proud and very happy to say she would promote you in the sense of doing that because you're doing something for the community, you're giving back and everything else. And it's always been a part of Pendavis to give back to the community, um, to do community service. It's been a big, huge part of our house. Um, Avis always had that basics. You could do the balls or you could do the community service. Uh, you're always going to work regardless yeah. of that. But to give back to the community is one of the greatest things that we can do. So thank you. Yes, I'm going to give you the nod, you know, from me and also, um, you know, on behalf of Avis, because it's a great thing that you've done. Okay, go ahead. You can Freddie, you, you are not going to make me... Freddie, it's too early for the tears. Like, you can't... You're not going to do this. Not gonna do this. <laughs> but thank you so much. And 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 thank you to Avis, because I know Avis is just looking, smiling down on all of us. Um, yeah. But, okay. Now, Google Arts and Culture has a project out for Pride Month called Ballroom in Focus. It's an extensive collection of images spanning from the early days of ballroom to now. It's an association with Ballroom Throwbacks, shout out to Caesar and them, as well as Destination Tomorrow, uh, the Bronx LGBTQ Center. Now, Freddie, mm-hmm. I perused the galleries, okay? Very mm-hmm. nice, by the way, what they did. But I couldn't help but notice that a lot of Pendavises, including you and Kim, and other significant figures from other houses like Selvin, you know, M- MC uh, Deborah, were missing from the photos. What are your thoughts on that? They have to pay us. That's the reason why we're missing. And I talked to another Pendarvis and he said the same thing. All the people that you see are dead. All the people that you don't see are alive. I mean, there are people who are alive who were in there too. Yeah, but those people are easily, easily easily you know okay cool okay we're gonna put you on this da, 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 da. sign a release sign a release no money mm. okay that makes sense always always avis always was like uh-uh bitch you it's about a dollar ain't nothing going on but the rent jocelyn brown and avis yes they talk the same language money this world is run by money, so make yours. Do yours. Do you. That was actually um, Gwen Guthrie. Yes, Gwen uh, Guthrie. Sorry. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gwen Guthrie, right. It was the, Gwen. The, the, and if you're interested, I put the album uh, cover right there. Because it's okay. we're still in Black Music Month, too. I have to take out <laughs> Black Music oh, Month me, as well. We, almost, we could almost do a whole interview in song titles if we do Black Music Listen, now. okay. We, yeah. We'd be here all night. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Because Black music has covered so much. You know, um, they find me hard to deal with because, you know, they offer me 
a penny and think I'm going to take it. I'm sorry, I'm not going to take a penny. Um, they offered. And why should you, Freddie? That's true. Why should, Let's why like should this. any of us? True. Let's be like this. When we had, when we went out to California to accept an award, right? Mm-hmm. They, you know, wanted to give us one hundred dollars, <laughs> right? But they were going to fly us out there and, you know, um, pay for our food. A hundred dollars? What's that? That's not even worth. That's not even worth going out there. When they came up to at least, you know, two fifty, right? And they said, "Oh, this is going over our budget," but I was like, "That's the least you could do because anybody else, you'd have to do five hundred. They'd have to do fifteen. See, but you know, we said, okay, then fine. It's it's a documentary. Yeah. It's getting into quote unquote." Um, an opening of something and everything else. So we're going to be generous in the giving of our time and our presence and everything else for this. And that was it. We seen a lot of people we knew. Um, we were happy to be there. But also, let's be like this. If you feel that we contributed something, right? and you wish to honor us for our contribution, then don't demean us in the sense of financially saying how you feel about our contribution. Just like we had gotten this offer to do a um, an opening for Paris is Burning in Europe, right? In this theater. But they wanted to pay us 25 pounds in which I said, you know, can you come up to 100? They said, no, we can't do that. And I said, okay, then we'll, you know, it's okay. Good luck. Yeah. And that was it. And, and what I notice is you get some of the same people always going to certain events and promoting certain things, I guess, because those are the ones who are just like, okay, sure, I'll take $50. Okay, sure, I'll take, you know, $100. I'll take a little something. But you mentioned something, and it reminded me of another story that you told me years ago about Mm -hmm. you and Kim and Peppa and Dorian. And it was that you all had gone out to Philadelphia. And you stayed at the Adams Mark Hotel, which is now a Target, by the way. You tore the hotel down, it's a Target store now. But right. you stayed at the Adams Mark Hotel. Right. And please tell us that story. For those who don't know the story, <laughs> tell us the story about the Adams Mark Hotel, because I think it's very important that they hear this story. Oh. It's, it's okay. very funny, but it's also very important. Okay. Um, we went to the Adams Mark Hotel um, to promote Paris is Burning on Philly TV somewhere, I think. And so we're in the hotel. Um, we go in, we get our rooms. We come down, we're going to have dinner, right? We're going to have this big, elegant dinner, all, all, you know, four of us at least. Me, Pepper, Dorian, and Kim. We sat there and Kim and Pepper ordered all this shit that you just, just out of their head. You know, oh, I'm going to live big. Yeah. You know, I'm going to order shit that I, you know, I'll never get before. I'll never get again. Dorian and me, we got the chicken, we got the steak, and we, you know, we chilled. And that was it. She said, stick with the big girl, because trust me, them two jackasses, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to find out later on. They didn't look at their food. They took a bite. Said, what the fuck is this shit? It's nasty. <laughs> then, then I'm eating mine, and Kim said, "Can I taste yours?" <laughs> That's it. okay here. Dorian gave Pep a little, and that was it. You know, they changed theirs to ours after we after they done tasted it and everything else. But it was crazy, and the interview was like 
why were we even there, me and Kim? Because it was all about Dorian and Pepper. So that was it. And Dorian, I, I love Dorian because Dorian was always a fair person, just like Ava's. Um, to my knowledge, and I do understand this because Kim told me Stuart, who, Stuart LaBeja Revlon told me this. And who else told me? Well, at, at least I heard it, you know, from enough people that Avis and Dorian were the only ones at the time, the only mothers who had like, like um, high level degrees, degrees in general, but high level degrees. Because Avis, I think she's like master's. I think she was master's. And Dorian had her degree in, what is it? She had a forensic degree or she, something like that where she, she knew phlebotomy as well <laughs> as some other bullshit. So, you know, they weren't stupid. They were not stupid, you know. But then also back then, if you were of a darker skin color, you had to have some kind of trackable intellectual base so that then people who hired you or, or even thought about dealing with you knew, okay, cool, this is a person who I can deal with because they have this level of intelligence or mm -hmm. and it shows through having college and, you know, so forth and a third. Yeah. That was a, I just enjoyed that story though. I wonder if the show though, because now I'm thinking back to that time, I wonder if it was AM Philadelphia that you were going on. Does that sound familiar? It does sound familiar. AM Philadelphia, it came on ABC. It came on the ABC yeah. station. Yeah, ABC, in yeah. Philadelphia, mm -hmm. which is yeah. literally like right across the street from that hotel and still <laughs> is. It's still like, it's, it's it, the station, it looks, TV station looks like a, a, a spaceship. <laughs> well, it used to, they moved to a different building there in a new building now um, in, in Philly, um, the ABC station. But now I've mentioned this before mm -hmm. and I'll say it again for everyone on stage, in the front row, the balcony, the orchestra, the cheap seats, and outside waiting online. When the mainstream media is interested in you, dot those I's and cross those T's. Because the moment you do something that they don't agree with, or they see something else, or someone else they can easily exploit, they will chew you up, spit you out, and burn the leftovers as if you've never existed. We see that happen with Legendary, with Pose, and even with Paris is Burning. See? It's sad and unfortunate, but this is the world in which we exist. That's why it's important to guard the culture. Share it only with intention and be protective of it. The one thing that's going on now is division. The division of L, B, G, T, Q, plus, 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 all of those are segmenters of our community. And the more we segment our community, the harder it will be for the community to achieve goals. It's easy to segment them. It's easy to do that, but it's hard to come together to achieve a goal. The more we segment, the more we separate, the harder it is, will, harder it will be for us to achieve other things that we may want or need in our lives. But hey, I'm old, you know, I can say these things though, but I'm just being honest and I'm being uh, hopefully, I'm hopefully giving people a, a, a perspective that they can look at maybe not now, maybe 10 or 20 years from now and say, you know what, he's right. We need to, you know, figure out how to break down these walls and come together and do what we have to do. 
Last night I was looking at the Mandalorian. It was the fact that the whole planet, the people of the planet coming together, they were all in different tribes, all in different places, but they all came together to do one thing. They broke their division, they came together and they took back their planet and they defeated the villain and that was it. We have to be able to do that to achieve the goal is better than to not at least try. Freddie, how can people get in touch with you? I have an Instagram. I, yeah, I have Facebook too. God help me. (laughs) You're so silly. You're falling out laughing too, because you know I don't touch them. You know I don't touch those things. Listen. I, Facebook, oh, I ain't touching the things for nothing. Instagram, Freddie, I only use it because I have to promote. If I didn't have to promote, then I wouldn't be on any of that stuff. Because I, I just, I, I don't like it. I don't like any of it. I don't like them. But I, I'm on IG, I'm on Facebook, Freddie Lee Pendarvis. That's it. It's simple. You know, that's it. Should, it's funny. There's one dude who I mean, I I mean, I wanted to be with him, but last time I seen him, he had somebody, which was like a couple of, a year or two ago. What's his name? And Oswald. Okay. Uh, so, um, that's it. But life changes. So, I'm here in Maryland. I'm kind of happy, but my full happiness hasn't hit me yet. Um, I just gotta get me a just gotta get me a call. <laughs> Did you listen to the advice I gave you? Yeah, when I told I, you about the vehicles. Now listen, you got Freddie. You gotta listen to me on this because here's the deal: you don't want anything that you're going to have to end up paying the same price you paid for the car to make repairs to the car. Right, yes. So that's why I said to you, don't get anything American that's that old. Because an American car that old, you're gonna, I'll tell you a story. Years ago, I had a Chrysler. And I paid like $4,500 for that Chrysler. That Chrysler had so many issues, Freddie like so many issues that I ended up putting about $4,500 back into that Chrysler. Oh God. Now for nine grand, I could have probably bought a newer car with lower miles and less issues, but I had to have that Chrysler. I love the color of it. It was such a nice car. Like I love that Chrysler. That Chrysler was just, it was just beautiful. And it was big, it was like a limo. Like I felt like I was driving a limo every time I got in it. It, it, was, it was a 90, it was a 99 Chrysler uh, something or another. I don't even remember the name huge of it. Huge car. It was, it was huge. I loved it, you know? Cause, and then also I liked it too, cause I was a bit of a thought back then and I liked having like big back seats so I could fool around in the car. I mean, <laughs> I'll just be honest. To be honest, that that's why I had it. But but what I was telling you though is, if you're going to get something that old, mm-hmm. get something like get a Toyota. That would probably be your best bet because the yeah. Toyotas, Freddie, still on the road mm-hmm. with like four and five hundred thousand miles on them, and they're still yeah. running. Yeah, I'm so still figure it out. That's Freddie Lee Pendavis, all one word on IG. Freddie with an I E, not a Y. Right. And when you hit him up, move with the same level of respect that you would <laughs> with the person signing your checks. Okay? <laughs> Freddie, I got to tell you about this show I was watching. There's a show on Amazon, on Amazon Prime that I was watching, and it's called mm-hmm. Swarm. Now, okay. it's, it's, Freddie is wild. There's this actress in it. Her name is um, Dominique Fishback. And okay. she's amazing. Like she's like every Oscar-winning actress wrapped into one. 
Okay. Like she's very versatile as as an actress. I think she's from Brooklyn too. Like yeah. I'd love to have her on my show one day. But the show, you're just gonna have to check it out. Like it's about a girl. She's like obsessed with this um this 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 uh singer, and she ends up turning into a serial killer. <laughs> like it's it's. In, and she's a black girl, this girl. She, yeah. she, she's such a good actress. So the, the, the show goes through um, like a, a time period. Okay. So it spans over, I want to say it spans over like three or four years. I mm -hmm. might be wrong. But over the time, you see her gain weight, lose weight. She changes her hair. Like she just, she completely takes on like different personas. Like she... Mm -hmm turns into a different person like all together freddie it's crazy. oh to, to kill someone yeah she she's 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 she, she goes on a killing spree she's okay. a she's a, a serial killer but here's okay. the thing that i noticed nobody ever suspects her because she's a black woman she just completely flies under the radar as a serial killer because think about it when you think about serial killers you're thinking about a white man now, well, mm -hmm. black men even because remember the uh, the the uh, the sniper in D.C. He was he was he was a brother. You're never thinking right. about a black woman being that diabolical. You forgot that I used to run around with murderers and assassins and all of that, and all the crazy people up in the clubs in New York. That's but just I, you know part of you know the, the culture. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like we right. just know, you go we to know people up, like you that. The, you go to the club that starts at around four o'clock in the morning, right? To meet your assassin, right? And the whole thing, you talk to him and you pay him and everything else, and you leave at twelve and at twelve noon, mm -hmm. right? And then he goes to bed, and then as far as it goes, you next week contract done. Is she doing that? She's worse. No, I'm saying oh. to get her contracts. Oh, Freddie. She... And it's not, you know, here's the other thing. Mm -hmm. Because the killing is the killing. Yeah. But she also does other things to, like, kill people's, I guess, like, their spirit, their control. Because there's, a, there's a, an episode where she meets this guy. I'm not going to tell too much, but she meets this guy. And... Mm -hmm. He has, um, he works on the tour of this singer who she's obsessed with. And he eats very healthy, this guy. Like, I think he might have been overweight at one time and he, you know, went vegan and he eats clean. So this girl in particular, she loves junk food. Like, that's all she eats is junk food. She eats bad. She's out of shape. She's not, you know, a overweight or heavy set, but she's, you know, out of shape because she eats junk mm -hmm. all the time. So she conv convinces this guy to. It's just a really because she. It's a really she crazy show. Targets. She breaks down her targets mentally yes. and emotionally, yes. as well as physically. Yes. It's been done, babe. It's yes. been done. But it's so good. It's Freddie. What shows it's are you watching done. though? What shows are you watching? I'm not watching nothing. I'm just reading. I'm what just are you reading. reading? So what are you reading? <laughs> Recommend some books for us. Oh, no, 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 no. These are like um, little teenage books. I I'm just running through them like quick That's and fast fine. in a hurry. We the teenage books. You know, uh, what is it? Um, gosh. They're like YA novels. They call them YA, young adult, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We like that. It's just, I, I, um, I do the adventure ones. And that's it. Uh, what is it? Uh... What is it? The music, um, a magician who rose from failure. I read those five. The great cleric. I read those ten. And it's funny. I read because <laughs> I wasn't watching TV, so I was mm -hmm. reading them both at the same time. I read like all ten of one book, all ten of one series. Then I read all five of the other, and then I sit and I'm like, oh gosh, now what next? So I just finished them both and. Um, that's what I was doing, you know? Yeah. All of these are the books that I've read already. Do you, Freddie, do you, like, write in your books? Do you highlight in them or anything like that? No. 
Because I do. I'm I'm one of those people. Like I and and I write in the section when you have like the notes in a book. You know uh -huh. when you can write notes. Because I yeah I I um I don't know. Like I like to go back. I like to write notes. But I'm reading this book. It's called The Gift, and it's it's um by Lewis Hyde. Are there any things you have had questions about in the sense, like back in the past, that I might know of that you want to hear my version of? I do. Oh my God, I do. I do. Let's hear so, them. So, so, I want to know what how y'all dated back then? Like, was it, you know, just friends <gasps> hooking each other up or stuff like that? Because there were no apps. There were no apps. I mean, you had chat lines. I was a matchmaker then. Were you? Yes, I was a matchmaker. I loved it. Uh, I'll go to the club, right? And people would actually, yeah. some people would even wait for me to get there because they knew I was brave enough to introduce people, right? So I would come to the club. Hey, how you doing? Okay, listen, I want to meet this guy. Da -da -da. Give me 10 minutes. Let me walk around. Okay. I walked around, said hi. And then I'd say, I'd know a friend. And I'd say, some, hey, how you doing? All right. Nah, 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 nah. Listen, why don't you dance with my friend? Here, go ahead and dance, y'all two. All right. Boom. They, you know, they were introduced. So later on, you know, drinks, conversation, and everything else would ensue. Right? Because this was at a nightclub. So they would dance. They would have drinks and conversation. Cool. Next thing you know, you know, he's not around a person. I said, didn't you get the number yet? He says, no. I said, bitch, what's wrong with you? You know, you take it forever fucking time and need to hold these, you bugging me. Don't bug me. Just go get the damn number. And the whole thing, he's like, fuck it. I said, excuse me, my friend wants to ask you something. Here. And I go push him and I walk away. And he said, oh, can I have your number? Can I talk to you later on? I said, okay, cool. Numbers exchanged. Boom. Okay. They go movies, dinner, um, maybe roller skating, um, you know, see each other different different things that we'd have planned out. Cause you know, there'd be a roller skating night, uh, um, a night, you know, most clubs, most nights with the nightclubs, then there'll be roller skating and everything else. So there'd be little different events you see each other at and you meet up and everything else. And so you do those things together and you develop. You develop slowly and surely as a couple. And in that development, you knew, okay, cool. This person and me, we're going to do this or we're going to do that or we're going shopping. Cool. That was a major thing, to go shopping with someone. Because... Will you come back looking like twins, getting on everybody's nerves? Or will you come back being individuals who are even more into each other? Now, Kim used to have this thing where he said, if a bitch come back looking like a twin, they're going to be out within a month. If they come back and each one of them is separate, then you know, they're going to last longer than that. Every time he said that shit, it may have been two, three months, but he knew they weren't going to last long, and they never did. So that was it. So for me, the among the curses for a couple is wearing the same outfits at the same time. I never understood. I mean... Maybe the same colors. I mean, because you really can't help. Oh, colors the same sometimes. colors. Okay, okay. The colors. But yeah, the yeah. same outfit is just that's that's creepy that's, to me. That's a curse. That's the curse of yeah. your your relationship. That's yeah. saying that I really don't want a relationship with this person. So I'm going to be just like them, so they could realize right. that we are not flowing together. I said, yeah, yeah. Mm. I uh -huh. hope y'all heard that you you inst all you little Instagram couples out there. I hope y'all heard what Freddie just said because all of that dressing in the same outfit and oh it's for pictures that shit ain't cute. Just... And most of the time, most of the time, they're not even really like you said, like Kim said. Yeah, they're not into each other. 
they not. It's just for cute. It's just for appearances. They're just keeping up appearances. It's just because it looks good. It's cute. Because I can't think of a time in any of my relationships that we've ever dressed alike. Like, I can't even, I mean, maybe the same colors, you know, or maybe, yeah, like maybe like we both have on like, you know, blue shirts with jeans or something like that. But I mean, to dress exactly mm -hmm. alike, I don't think I've ever, um, I don't think, no, I've never done that. I don't, I, no, mm -hmm. that's just... Mm -hmm. That that's teetering on like creepy. It's funny because that that made me that reminded me of a time where I was brought a shirt at the time Coca Cola was really big and you know Coca Cola like um, activewear, so I had this Coca Cola shirt that my lover brought for me, and so it was home. But though me and my lover went out, we went out, we had dinner, we went, you know, just hanging around, laughing and everything else. And then we went to the night, we went to where the nightclub was, but they were letting out. So my cousin Kim was in, he was wearing my shirt that my lover gave me and I hadn't worn it yet. But everybody was trying to push me to Kim and to say, Kim, you have on his shirt. He never wore it yet. I was so excited about being out with my lover, having dinner, doing doing the movies, you know, roller skating, you know, living a life, being this couple. And I'm telling it, telling to Kim. And Kim said, Miss Singh, don't you know I got on your shirt? I don't give a fuck. I don't care. But you know, let me tell you this. And, I, and he started cursing everybody out. Everybody. To think about it now is just funny. But in at that time, I was just so happy and so excited because being a couple, being with somebody who you vibed with, who you made, you know, um, time pass and you felt so good with, that was everything. That was everything. Yeah, and I, and I think too, people need to start getting more into finding people they actually like and can spend time with because right. a lot of people get into relationships today and they're only with each other because you know that they think the person looks good yeah. or it's about what the person can do for them it's not about how a person makes you feel how, how a person makes them feel it's not about you know a person being fun or funny you know and and engaging it's just about you know something superficial and they end up miserable when they get into relationships like that. And I say this all the time. If you want to be in a happy relationship, you have to like each other. Yeah. You have definitely. to like each other. You can love a person all day long. You can be in love and love them forever and ever and ever. But if you don't like them, you're going to be miserable. Definitely. I say it all the time. I say it all the time. You're going to be miserable. So the best thing is to find someone you like, be friends, have a friendship, and then you can the love can grow and it can build and everything like that and that's the thing that you know back then you had that you had the ability or you took the time to become friends with somebody go from friends to intimate lovers and everything else it was a building thing because I mean, there were so many, always so many people around, but which one suited you for that time for what you wanted and what you wanted, hopefully, well, from what I understood, you know, my skewed, innocent, stupid view <laughs> back then <laughs> was, you know, you wanted somebody who would just make you happy and not just in the moment, not just look good, but somebody made you feel happy. There was a young man once upon a time who used to walk, you know, he walked the balls and everything. Mm -hmm. And oh, Freddie, he used to beat people. He used to beat people. And he used to throw them in cabs. <laughs> <laughs> you are evil. You are so evil. But he would have loved you for that because... He was he had he had a heart of gold. He really did. His name was Jamel. 
he was of the legendary at the time House of Princess. There, I think there's no no princesses anymore. I'm not sure, but he was hard. When people say they're hard now, if I compared them to to him, they would be sand. <laughs> they would be sand because they would not be hard in comparison to him. He went through the military and every place he went, he was like, look, you're going to give me what I want and I don't care what you think, I'll whip your ass over this counter if you don't. He was that hard. So, <laughs> when it came to the balls, he, he would walk realness. So many dudes that get up and walk. Oh, he cute, he real, he cute, he real, he cute, he real. Okay, get chopped for this. Chop for that. The last one. Oh, we get ready. 10, 10, 10, 10 across the board. Okay, the trophy goes to bang. He got knocked the fuck out. Oh, okay. It's you again. Here, Jamel. Take your take the trophy. Bye. That was it. <laughs> wow. That wasn't the icing on the cake. Threw him in a car, took him to his house, had sex with him, and threw him out the door and threw his clothes out with him afterwards, selling him, get where you got to get on y'all. That's the icing on the cake. Show. That's the icing on the cake. Oh my. <laughs> Who's harder than that? Yeah, that's hard. Thank you. Who's harder than that? Okay. The person didn't come out no more. The person didn't come out no more. Wow. And what happened to him? What what Who? happened to him? Uh, Jamel Princess. Jamel passed away. Okay. He passed away. Mm hmm. Wow. I want another Kim story. <laughs> you want another Kim story? I love these Kim. No, I love like the stories. Like sh share with us. Okay, one time. Share with us, please. Kim had, you know, Kim had gone out, right? And mm. he was in his neighborhood and some boys chased him. And he was like, okay, y'all got it because y'all got numbers, right? Yo, 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 listen, get the, get the, open the door, open the door. He opened the door, right? They opened the door thing, right? And, you know, we in the house, we were just different. I came out of the house with a sword. <laughs> and the whole thing, they were like, what the fuck? You know, medieval times? And that was it. I could have I could have really paralyzed this person. But I didn't hit them on the back. I only hit them on the leg with the sword and only the side of the sword. I didn't actually cut them on the leg. So that was it. And um, a couple of weeks later, Kim's father came and broke the sword. <laughs> he said, y'all can't have this shit in the house. Bang! Took it out, threw it away. And that was it. It was so funny. So funny. I don't think you ever told me how y'all met. Kim had three sisters. Three biological sisters. So, and he had four older brothers. So Kim came from a huge family. Yeah. So um, his sister and me met, knew each other and everything else. Um, and I met him from his sister and that was it. So boom. <laughs> Oh, Freddie, you just give me so much. Like every time you give me, I mean, and, and, and when we have like our conversations, like you yeah. give me a lot too. Yeah. But I mean, you just give me so, so, so much. And I'm so grateful for that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You give me so much in the sense of being able to come here to talk, to, yeah. you know, to unload, to, 
to let people know certain things that have happened and right. can happen and to open their eyes to possibilities. So that's a wonderful thing. It is, it is. And I'm glad that we, you know, we can do this. I'm glad that you're around. I'm, I'm glad, I'm still glad that all those many years ago, I found you, I manifested you because I told you, you know, when I was a little kid, like, you know, you were, you know, just the, the cool summer camp counselor. And I did. I, I manifested you. So I'm glad that, you know. You, the cool summer camp counselor. <laughs> yeah, that's my thing that I'm, I've been using lately. It is. It's, it's like yeah. the highest compliment for, for anyone. But yeah, I just, um, I don't know. I'm just so grateful that we have you and we have you to speak with and, and for you to share all of this information and for you to just share, you know, so much from back then. Um, excuse me, with the younger, um, you know, the younger generation, because yeah. one day they're going to come and be asking me questions. Yeah. And I'll have my experience, but I'll also have your stories too. You know, we're all here to help each other and, and get guide each other through this crazy journey called life. Thank you for coming on, Freddie. Thank you. And also, you know, I have to say thank you too, because... Mm -hmm. I had um, gotten a um, text and call from Saul Pendarvis that um, the same thing as far as all these things have gone up, right? But so many Pendarvises have been eliminated from them, you know, even P especially Pendarvises who won and, right. you know. I mean, Avis, Avis was the only one I saw. Yeah. Yeah, Avis was there, but Kim was Kim is almost like completely deleted. Yeah, and you are not there, you know. So, do you have photos of Kim? Do you have like Kim photos, like photos um, of you all back in the day? No, those are his sister has. Those oh, okay. his sisters have. So right. that's it. But what um, about for you? Do you have photos of you from back in the day? Of like his, his sisters have them. His sisters have. Oh, okay. Them. Yeah. Okay. So I'm. I'm, right. I'm good <laughs> but what is it um you know and it's like he was even saying it's like they're trying to delete you and I said you know what if they're trying they they've been trying to delete me for a simple for for a minute right but you know what I'm gonna let them do what they feel is best right because in the end them trying to eliminate me only is gonna make me stronger Mm -hmm. It's only going to make me better. And it's only going to put me higher. So exactly. I'm just going to chill and let them yeah. do their thing. That's so. it. I mean, that's all you have to do. And, you know, I'll say this too. People be their own undoing. Yeah. You don't really have to do anything. You don't have to wish negatively on them. People will cancel themselves. They'll harm themselves. They'll end themselves. You don't have to do any root work to ruin a person. They'll no. do it on their own. They'll do it to themselves. And that's it. And you know, it's like people want to pick and choose how they acknowledge or how they, you know, how they acknowledge you. Yeah. And you know, they don't get to do that. Like, if, you know, if you're going to acknowledge someone, Ask them for the photos, pay them for the photos, and also ask them to come to the event. Right. Don't leave them out of one thing and then ask them to come do something else. Even though they're different people doing this, still just whole, just as a whole, be just be full with people. Definitely. Don't pick and choose how you're going to, you know, include them in things. Do it Definitely. fully. Or yes. don't do it at all. Please. Or don't do it at all. Unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. It truly is. But hold on a second. I got something to, to at least let okay. y'all you know. This is a sensitive sensitive care um, lotion, right? This okay. is the lotion. And I usually use the soap and the lotion together, Dove. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, it, it does work, you know, without question. It was um, Kim's sister who started me on it years ago. And she said, you know, this is good for your skin. It should work and everything else. And I've been using it, using Dove. And 
I, I mean, I use it every, like, I'll use it for a month and a half. Mm -hmm. Then I'll switch to oil of Olay. Then I'll switch to something else, right? And then I'll go back to it, you know, and then I'll go back to oil of Olay. Those are the two I usually use, Dove and oil of Olay. Mm -hmm. um, that's it. And also I use Johnson's, Johnson Johnson Baby Lotion. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. That's good. I mean, like, I don't think I've ever not used that. I yeah. think I've probably used that since I was a little baby. So, right. Yeah. yeah. So, all those, good stuff. Yeah. The, all that is what I use for my skin because um, you only get one skin, um, you know, and it, it always. Biggest yeah. organ you have. Thank yeah. you. And as yeah. far as it goes, the. the care and attention I pay to my skin is very, very, it's very detailed at times. Um, mm -hmm. Like when I was doing pose, right? I knew I was gonna be wearing heavy makeup. So right. what I did is I went extremely old school and I got a small jar of Pond's cold cream. And mm -hmm. what I would do is put it on my face, right? And right. then I take hot towels, hot as I could, I put it on my face and that was it and let the heat from the thing just absorb the cold cream mm -hmm. into my face. Right. And then when I put, when the makeup went on, it didn't bump up and clump up or anything else. I had so much moisture in my skin. It was hard for the makeup to actually cling to my skin. Yeah. That was it. See, I hope all of you all who wear makeup, I hope you listened and you heard that. You need to have yeah. a barrier between your skin and the makeup. Anything you want to say, Freddie, before we go? I just want to wish everybody, uh, I'm gonna say this in a funny way. Love, peace, and Afro grease, right? <laughs> At first, but deeply, really, I want to wish you health, happiness, safety, and serenity now and in your life and in the lives of the people around you. And also a happy pride. Yes, a happy pride too. Well, <laughs> Freddie, thanks for coming back. This is your home away from home. Thank and you. you can come back anytime. Thank you, um, thank you. Anytime you call, I will always respond. See, that's what I'm talking about right there. And to all of you out there, this is your home away from home too. Thank you for coming back and watching and listening to The Chris David Show. Tell your friends, tell your mama, tell your daddy, tell your baby daddy, <laughs> tell your boyfriend, tell your sister, tell your cat, tell your dog, tell your doctor, and tell everyone who's Black and proud to follow us on Instagram at Chris David TV and follow our show at The Chris David Show on Instagram and YouTube. You can also visit ChrisDavidShow.com. There you'll find everything you need to know about the show. Now be kind and be well.